So the next paper is very similar to what we just covered about Go. It's the same methodology, but then we are gonna see whether the same methodology can help us solve different problems, maybe Shogi and maybe chess. Same as before, we are gonna have a neural network that takes as input your state and it's gonna output the probability of your actions and a value for that state. S is your board position in the form of an image. These are your move probabilities, what action you're gonna take next. If A is your action, PA, one of the components of this P, which is a vector, is the probability of you taking that action in that state. V is the expected outcome. And in the end, you want V to be the expected value of the outcome. So that's how you're gonna interpret this. Unlike Go, which was uh, win or lose, for something like chess, you can have win, draw, or lose. We're gonna still do Monte Carlo tree search to give us the data necessary to train this neural network. We're gonna start from a root state. You're gonna associate some probability to the actions in the root state. And this is coming from your Monte Carlo tree search. And then that's our loss. We just saw this. Z is gonna help us supervise V and Pi is gonna help us supervise P with some uh, regularization. For the search, for each pair of state and action, for each edge, you're gonna keep a visitation count. The total action value, mean action value, which is W divided by N, and your prior, which is going to come from your neural network. And these are the statistics that you're storing for this pair of state and action. S0 is your node root, actually root node of the tree. SL is the leaf node at time step L. And then you're choosing your actions based on your value, your mean action value, and then you want to explore as well. So very similar to what we covered just now. Here's an exact formula for your U. Most of these are constant, like this term and this term here. And you can just say that U is proportional to your prior probability divided by one plus N, your visitation count. And the higher the visitation count, the lower is your incentive to explore that pair of state and action. And then this doesn't really matter. It's just a constant. In terms of mathematics, it doesn't matter. But when you are actually implementing this, these are all of the hyperparameters that you need to choose. Okay, and that's one of the reasons why reinforcement learning is hard. There's a lot of hyperparameters that you need to play around with. Now, if you're at the leaf node, the way that you're gonna update your statistics, so you're gonna have some statistics for your leaf node and some actions because some new edges are getting added to your graph, to your tree. The last guy we know, but the rest of them we initialize with zero. So this one we are reading off from our neural network from here. And the way you're gonna update it, you're gonna increase your visitation count. All of the edges that led to that node, their visitation count is gonna increase by one and their value is gonna get increased by this V that you're reading off from your neural network. And then Q is just W divided by N, it's the average. And the same framework is gonna let you play chess, shogi, and go. Stockfish is a famous software for chess. Elmo is for shogi, and AlphaGo zero is for go. And the method that we are covering here is alpha zero. And given enough training time, you can beat the previous state of the art. And all of these stockfish beats human. Elmo beats human. And uh, AlphaGo zero also beats human. And this is alpha zero. Alpha go zero is the previous paper. And zero is because there is zero supervision. So you're not using human data to train it. Alpha go Lee is the first alpha go, which had human supervision and it beat a human, an expert playing the game of go. And this is alpha zero. So given enough training time, it's gonna come up with nice strategies. Let's take a look at the board position. And let's say you just took, or your opponent just took queen f8. So they just moved their queen to f8. Now you're considering you are white and you're considering your next move. And uh, in the end, the algorithm is gonna take b5. It's gonna push this pawn forward. But what is the thought process behind it? If you let it train, if you let it think, sorry, for 10 to the power two simulations, and report the top nine options that it has, 
that it's thinking about. One of them is D5, but it's also thinking about other options like rook H1, taking this rook and putting it in H1. If you let it think more, it's gonna consider C5 and D5. So C, sorry, C6 is pushing this pawn forward. So it's thinking about that. And then it is thinking about D5. And it's also thinking about what's gonna happen next. If I push this pawn forward, the black is gonna take it. So, and then it's gonna do more and more simulations. It's gonna keep thinking, it's spanning the tree. And then in the end, it's pretty sure that this sequence of actions is gonna happen, but it's not that much sure about the next step. And therefore it's gonna take D5. So I included this paper because maybe more of us know about chess compared to Go, but any questions? I have a question and I don't know if it's more um, technical question, but um, it seems like the moves change during the game. So for example, if we play Go and it's 30 by 30, initially you have 900 possibilities, but as you play, you have less and less possibilities. So I'm just wondering how do we actually, um, I guess, implement this very number of outputs or is it just automatic? So that's a great question. What's gonna happen is uh, these are all of the actions that are possible, that are allowed in that uh, position. So for instance, not many, of, not many of these actions are possible, like taking your pawn and uh, pushing it back, moving it to D3. So these are gonna be excluded from the set of possible actions. And you're putting a probability on that, on only the available set of actions. So what we have here, alpha zero, is a model-based reinforcement learning method. So you know the model for your environment. And actually, not only it's model-based, you know the model. You know the rules of the game. So if any of you have played chess before on a computer, you know that it's going to be able to show you the possible set of actions. Some of these softwares are going to let you choose the set of possible actions. So yes, you're going to mask out the invalid set of actions. That's correct. Any other questions? Does that answer your question? I think so. So the environment, so one, the environment has to tell you what is possible. And then for each one of them, you output a probability rather exactly. than um, separately output 900 probabilities initially, just per probability, per, sorry, per action, you output a probability. Exactly. Yes. Any other questions? The diagram that we're looking at here with 100, 1,000, 10,000 simulations, they all are branching, but all, all we're viewing here is just the most likely 10 outcomes. And that's why when we get farther and farther, like to the 10 to the sixth, we're not seeing all of the initial branches because it's, it's certain that the best move, um, at least for like whatever eight steps in a row, has to be white, black, white, black doing definitive things. Yes, exactly. So this tree is going to be a huge tree. And what we are showing here is only the 10 or nine possible outcomes, the most likely outcomes Got it. based on the value that you're associating. So the more red it is, the more value you're associating to that. So the higher is the expected value of your winning. Yeah. So yes, but this uh, tree is gonna be gigantic. And I just wanna make sure I understand this like exploration um, step where it it's, it's randomly choosing things and it's trying to back propagate how valuable those next choices are. And then it continues to try new moves and it happens to explore the more um, valuable ones more often. And that's why they end up, like we, re we return just the visitation count at the end, but we also know that we're gonna visit the, uh, the branches which are more valuable to win. Exactly, because you're taking a look at your value and you're reading it up from your neural network. Got it. Okay, so the value matters. And then in the end, what you're gonna take a look at is the visitation count. But implicitly, there is higher value if you visited something more in that state and action. Yes, that's implicit. That makes sense, thank you. Both because of this P and because of your V. So your neural network has a direct effect of what you're gonna see and vice versa your visitation counts is gonna have a direct effect on your policy and your value network. So they are helping each other out. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.